Hello everyone and welcome back to my channel. If you're new here, we talk about all things homesteading, homemaking, and just our journey to a slower, more simple life. Another beautiful day today. It is a little bit more chilly than it has been the last couple of days just because it's been so beautiful. I think it's like mm, maybe 47 out right now but it is beautiful blue skies and it really is not that bad at all. So my game plan for today for at least this little morning bit is I'm going to do a little bit of weeding in the beds that I already have and I want to start planting some of the things that are a little bit more cold hardy so that'll be some leafy greens like lettuce maybe some swiss chard as well as get some beets and radishes going it really makes the garden season feel real when you can really start planting stuff outside but i'm just gonna kind of see what i am able to get done while i have the time to do so so hi oakley <laughs> oh are you gonna get in the bed is that what you're gonna do oh Okay. <laughs> you're gonna get in the garden bed. Is that your choice? Can we get out of the garden bed that I need to weed? Oakley likes to uh, sleep and just kind of lay in the garden bed sometimes. So, oh, are you gonna help with the weeding? Are you helping? I don't know if he just wants attention. <laughs> He's usually not right up in my business like this. But I was gonna say, this is the bed that I had the pumpkins in last summer. The pumpkins that did so very well. This bed definitely has some good nutrition in it. I'm only going to kind of rotate things around and not put things in the same places they were in last summer just to get different uh intake of nutrients and things like that but i haven't fully decided where things are going yet just that i don't want things in the same spot as the previous year definitely want to utilize the beds that i have that are deeper wisely wow i'm getting quite the dandelion harvest here where i am none of the blossoms have come up yet but i am definitely seeing the leaves and of course the roots when i pull them up dandelion is typically easy to identify but there are some other kind of yellow flowers that pop up so you always want to look for the spiky leaves and that's how you can be for sure the entirety of the dandelion plant is edible and really good for you and can be used in many different ways. This bed is really not doing badly at all for weeds in it. There's really not that much going on. I know some of the other ones I can't say the same, unfortunately. Oh, look at that tap ribbon on that one. Another common weed I seem to get in my garden beds is stinging nettle which is another thing that is actually really good for you another plant that has a lot of benefits you can make really good tea with it once you take the stinging nettles off of it and i actually do want to plant some of those plants um in a future location when i live somewhere else but just in a specific spot it's not something you want to deal with in a garden because like the name suggests it does not feel good when you touch it there is nettle varieties though that do not have those sharp kind of stingy barbs on the leaves
Now that those beds are looking a little bit better, I'm going to get started on starting to partially fill some of this big uh, area. It is so much, I have no clue how much it will take to get even close to filling all of it, but I got a little bit of soil and compost, so I'm just going to start and see kind of how much of a dent that makes. Okay, let's see what I have here to potentially plant. I definitely have my carrots. I have new Corota. And I'm pretty sure these are the ones I did last year and they did pretty well. I have some rainbow carrots and I have cosmic purple too. So I might try some of those other ones. I think I will go ahead and plant carrots today. I'm going to do carrots in beds that have a little more depth to them. I also have some peas that I can plant today, so I might do that. Those seeds are really old now, and I know last year they still germinated, but not as well. So I'll just plant them and see what the germination rate will get on those. We're also going to do some Swiss chard. That'll be very delicious. Let's get some collards out and some lettuce and some kale too, why not? And we'll even do spinach, just all the greens. <laughs> yes, and then we're going to get some beets. I have early wonder beet, bull's blood beet, and we'll do the radish also. These grow so quickly. I think I have everything I think I will start today. Now I just need to kind of decide where exactly these things are gonna go. I'm trying not to overthink where I plant things because I also want to mix things kind of all everywhere, not to put like all tomatoes in this section, all beets in this section, but kind of mix things all over the place that will hopefully kind of make the ecosystem feel a little bit more I guess how it would be in nature because there's more diversity and as well in that circumstance to help keep pests from kind of gravitating all to one area to keep some areas more separate and hopefully not have as big of a hit. I really don't have huge pest problems but the thing I know that gets the most pests for me are those brassicas as well as leafy greens. I get cabbage moths like crazy so I really just kind of want to put things all over the place but also I want to make sure I don't overplant and not have room for things. It is the struggle of just trying to find the balance of everything. But I'm going to go ahead and start planting up now. Hello, it is a new beautiful day and I have a little project that I want to do and show you in case you want to do it too. And I'm going to be making a worm compost bin. Now it's going to be a super simple one. Since this is my first time I'm going to be doing worm composting, I've had just a compost pile essentially for years and years and years and years. I don't do a lot with it. It's not like on a constant rotation and being treated perfectly. It's basically 
a place I just take all compostable items and it does do what it needs to do just so you know if you're kind of a busy person and don't feel like you can do a big like compost operation to make sure you turn it and keep it at certain heat that is okay you can still like have a pile for compostable items opposed to throwing it away it just takes a lot a lot more time but I have worms uh, coming in the mail and you may your first question might be why don't I just go get some worms from outside because I find them all the time I definitely could do that the reason I chose to get some worms from online in my case hopefully where you are you could find some local but because there are differences between the types of worms here we have the common earthworm and things like that and what I'm getting is red crawlers. They are just a lot more efficient at doing the job and so they kind of uh, are a better fit for a worm compost bin. So that is what I am going with. Now I actually have three of these kind of totes that you can just get from a local Walmart or any kind of store like that. Just regular old totes. I have three because I'm gonna do a kind of rotation method. There is a few ways that you can kind of change this project up a little bit, but essentially one bucket is going to hold the compost with the worms and the soil and the stuff that I add to the worm bin. Another one is going to be underneath to kind of switch when I want to use uh, some of the worm castings that they create. And the one on bottom is going to hold kind of the moisture the worm tea kind of liquid part that will come out you can make this into worm tea by adding it to water and so that dilutes it a little bit and that's really good to put in your garden as well but the first thing i'm going to do is get my drill and i don't think you can see but i already started putting a few holes around and i'm going to do it around the top of two of the containers these holes I'm going to make so they are too small really for the worms to want to go in and out of but of course we need to get air to the worms and I will be putting a lid on the top layer so we just want to make sure there is a place for that oxygen and everything to circulate. So here is my drill and I'm going to make sure my hair is far away from it because that is not a good thing. <laughs> I should really put it up but I trust myself enough. And it's super, super easy. Just, you wanna find yourself a good bit. This is what I'm working with here. Easy peasy. Now, do not be fooled. I am not much of a power tool gal. Uh, I try to learn as much as I can about all things, but I can't say I'm that good with tools and building in general unfortunately i really wish i was and i do plan to get better over time but just so you know if i can do this uh you can do it and everybody you know can do it too <laughs> so i'm just gonna go ahead and put holes all the way around this one and then the second one as well now that those two have the little holes all the way around for air i'm gonna pop this bud into reverse there we go. Loosen that up. Like I said, not a professional. <laughs> I have a bigger bit now and I'm going to make holes in the bottom that worms could pass through, but not so that they just like fall right out, but that they can pass through if they choose. That is why I'm doing the three totes opposed to two so that when I want to get to the worm castings, I can make sure there is nothing left for them to eat in the one they're in and put more things for them to eat on the one above. They will come up through the holes and then I can take the one beneath to go use in my garden. So that is the strategy. So I'm going to go ahead and flip these so that I can see the bottom and make a few holes in them. So that is the process for just getting the totes ready. I am also going to, of course, put some soil and compost in the tote for the worms, but I'm going to go ahead and save that for when the worms are actually here. 
and so that will be exciting we'll pick up again whatever day that is doesn't seem like they're coming today i think they'll be here tomorrow so stay with me and then we'll get some worms in here it is time the worms are here and i'm gonna let them out i also have a bag of compost that i am gonna go ahead and dump in the bucket and then just add the worms to it afterwards. So let us do that. I'm gonna go ahead and give this a good mix with my hands to loosen it up some. Okay, we got a bag of worms here. Let's open it up. I'm just gonna go ahead and dump it in. And there is movement, so they are not dead from coming in the mail. Hooray! See, there's one wiggling right there. More wiggling around. So I'm just gonna let them kind of chill and let them get used to the new soil that they are in. But before I end, I wanna talk about a little bit of what you should and should not be kind of putting in your new worm compost bin. You want to avoid dairy and meat and that is mostly due to what other things that those things can attract. Well hello for Oakington of the Oakington Nation. With worms you're also going to want to avoid citrus really. I think you could get away with some but it's better to just not put anything like orange or any other kind of citrus in your worm compost bin. It just makes the acidity too high. You also just want to monitor the moisture that is in your compost bin. If it is so wet that when you squeeze the soil, water is like pouring out of it, you know that it is a little too wet. But if it is so dry that it doesn't stick together nicely like that, it'll be too dry for the worms, opposed to if they would just have a regular compost bin. It doesn't matter too much if you kind of just let it go, but in this case, if you let it go too long, your worms will die, so. You also don't want to just completely load it up with food. You want to just do a little bit at a time, so I'm not going to be putting all of my waste from the day in the worm compost bin. A lot of it is still probably going to just go in the pile that I have, and just some will come in here because you don't want to overload them on food and you want to keep a good balance of the green to brown in here as well so i'm going to be adding some leaves in here probably some spent hay as well as the leftovers from things like apples like apple cores or whatever else kind of waste that you have but making a worm compost bin is very easy and if you have a lot of totes like this you can make kind of a whole worm farm and it would not cost you barely anything at all. I did buy these totes new and that costs a lot more than it used to in years previously unfortunately but if you have totes like this you can make a bunch for no cost just what it takes you in time to drill some holes and fill it with soil and get some worms and you definitely can use worms just from outside i just chose to buy the red crawlers because they are more efficient for the job but if you can't spend the 20 dollars to get some worms then definitely do it with worms outside that you come across this is definitely a fun project and something that you can do whether you have a huge field or a little house in town like i do or even an apartment another thing to keep note of though is that Worms will die in kind of extremish temperatures, so anything below 50s, lower 50s, you risk them really slowing down and then dying if it gets too cold. And anything like above 80s, super hot, can fry your worms. So just keep that in mind, depending on location, if you're going to keep them outside and it gets really hot, maybe in a shady spot. And I know that I will have to bring this tote inside in the winter if I want to keep this little operation going and not have all the worms die. But I hope you enjoyed today's video. If you did, please consider subscribing so you can join this community of like-minded folk. Garden season is really starting to kick off now, so I'm just excited for all the things I'm gonna be doing and I will be making content along the way. I hope to see you in the next one. Bye bye